Good morning. Good morning. We gather to worship God this morning, and we trust that you will be blessed as we experience God's presence together. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, it is truly an amazing day, and just uh, continuing lifting up prayers for all of those in central Illinois who have just been slammed with snow this week. I know both of my kids were in that path, and um, and uh, my son in Champaign in particular is a first responder and, and the challenges that they have faced this week and just um, thanking God for safety and for um, equipment to help them dig everything out. Um, lots and lots of snow as we have experienced in our own lives at times as well. And just um, a couple of announcements and Stacy has an announcement too in a moment. Um, Every year, our annual conference has what's called a laity convocation, and it's a time of learning, it's a time of growing in our own discipleship, and I encourage you, it's open to anybody and everybody who would like to participate. Um, the, it's all on Zoom um, this year, and it's next Saturday morning, and it, it usually ends by 11.30 or 12, so it's just a morning, and um, obviously with Zoom, you can come in late if you need to, or take off early if you need to. Um, but they do ask that you register. Um, and so you can, they'll send you the Zoom link um, once you register. So that's always excellent. And I really highly recommend that you take a morning and participate in that. Um, there's more information about it in the e-news from this week as well. Um, also, I wanted to announce that um, we have a new staff parish chair as of February 1st, Jeff Swafford, and he is out of town this weekend, but we'll be here next weekend. So uh, please take a moment to um, get to know him a little better and to thank Don Pearson for his years of service and staff parish. Um, also, we have um, Lynette. Thank you to Lynette for her years of serving as our church treasurer. She has decided to step down and we got, so that position is open. Um, so, but in the meantime, she has offered to continue making sure the bills are paid and payroll is made. So thank you for that, Lynette. Um, but I, my hunch is that she would prefer somebody to volunteer for that position sooner rather than later. Uh, so if you know someone, if you or if you know someone who might be interested in that, please let me know um, you know, or talk to Lynette and she can fill you in more on, on what that entails. Um, so Stacy, Cool. Wearing lots of hats today. First of all, Don and Lynette, um, my round of applause. Thank you so very much, sweethearts, for years <laughs> of all your heart. Um, okay. For my gather hat this morning, I want to thank Circle One. Um, pretty soon you'll start to smell wonderful things coming up from the downstairs. We're having another feast day today. In case you didn't remember, please plan to stay. Lots of good goodies down there. Um, and from my Say Grace hat, um, you probably know that uh, or you have received your initiative, your Valentine's Day initiative about hygiene products to be donated for North Chicago community partners. Well, we've decided to boost the love um, next Sunday, close to Valentine's Day, we're going to put a great big red box out, outside in the lobby, I guess, is that what we call it? Does it have a church name? I guess it's a lobby. Um, and um, we're hoping that you come to church full of love with your hygiene products to fill up the box overflowing. Um, as our scripture says today about the nets and the fishermen, that there was so much, it was overflowing. So we hope that our box overflows next Sunday. Um, and kids, if you don't know about this initiative and the things that we do, I'll tell you about it in Sunday school, but you are obviously welcome to bring um, a, a hygiene product as well to put in the box. Okay, enough about that. Thanks for listening. Beside the sea, along ordinary paths, in our daily work, God calls us. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather to sing your praise and hear your word. Speak to us now that we may be wise enough to perceive your call. Strengthen us now that we may be brave enough to answer when you call. Guide us now 
that we may follow where you would have us go. The scripture reading is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One day, Jesus was standing beside Lake Genesaret when the crowds pressed in around him to hear God's word. Jesus saw two boats sitting by the lake. The fishermen had gone ashore and were washing their nets. Jesus boarded one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, then asked him to row out a little distance from the shore. Jesus sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he finished speaking to the crowds, he said to Simon, row out further into the deep water and drop your nets for a catch. Simon replied, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing, but because you say so, I'll drop the nets. So they dropped the nets and their catch was so huge that their nets were splitting. They signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They filled both boats so full that they were about to sink. When Simon Peter saw the catch, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, leave me, Lord, for I'm a sinner. Peter and those with him were overcome with amazement because of the number of fish they caught. James and John, Zebedee's sons, were Simon's partners, and they were amazed too. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. As soon as they brought the boats to the shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and ever be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you? in me will you love the you you hide if i but call your name will you quell the fear inside and never be the same will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. You may be seated, please. 
what stood out for you as you heard this passage today? It's a really familiar story. And oftentimes, and I sit, say this probably a lot, you've heard me say it many times, that when you read a passage, and particularly when you read it out loud, you hear it a little differently. And you probably hear it different today than you heard it 20 years ago, um, or even last week, or the week before, or whenever the last time you read it was. So as you hear the passage this morning, what was it that you heard? And I always feel like what you heard and jumps out at you is your word from God for the day. The word that jumped out at me is the word drop. Now it seems like an unusual word that kind of jump off the page at me. But when you think about it, when Jesus finished teaching, he asked Simon to row out further into the deep water and drop the nets for a catch. In Simon's response is, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught a thing, but because you say so, I'll drop the nets. So they dropped the nets and their catch was so huge that the nets were splitting. And then fast forward a little bit to the last verse, and it doesn't use the word drop, but it used the word left. As soon as they brought the boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. Either way, dropping is letting go. Leaving is letting go. What is it that they are letting go of in order to follow Jesus? This story is an invitation to discipleship. Jesus takes the initiative. We know in our own lives that Jesus always takes the initiative, that Jesus is always inviting us into relationship with him, that Jesus is always inviting us into discipleship, that Jesus is always inviting us to follow him. Jesus stepped into Simon's boat. Jesus asked Simon to go out into the deep water. Jesus invited Simon to drop the nets for a catch. And as we remember, Simon says, if you say so. And Simon responded obediently. But I always have to wonder, because I'm human, what if Simon had said no? What if Simon had said, you know, Jesus, I, we fished all night long, and we caught absolutely nothing. I'm tired. I'm going home to bed. That's Simon's freedom to be able to say that. As people who are created in free will, we can say no to Jesus. But when we say yes to Jesus, amazing things happen. When we drop our net, amazing things happen. There's such awe and amazement when they pulled in the catch. And you have to remember that these are professional fishermen. I mean, they have fished for their entire lives. They knew where there was the fish and where there wasn't the fish. And they, I, I'm totally convinced that they, if they knew that there were fish out in the lake that night, they would have found them and they would have caught them. I'm sure that they were convinced that there was no fish to be found that night. And yet Jesus says, drop your nets. And the catch was so abundant. And they were amazed. They were all amazed. Sometimes we learn that God calls us when we're tired, when we have done everything that we can possibly do on our own, that God calls us in the midst of our ordinary lives, that God calls us and we answer and we say yes and we drop our net. I am such a believer in that God speaks to us today through circumstances and through the voices of others. I've learned that if the same thing comes up twice or sometimes more often, I need to stop and I need to listen. That's sort of my cue from God that God has something that God wants to say to me. And sometimes it takes a long period of time. Like there's one thing that I've been working on for a really long time. And it's like, 
I just don't see the connection yet, God. And I know that that connection will come about sometime. And it doesn't always often take this long, but I'm just stay with it and keep looking for a connection. And oftentimes those connections are immediate. And sometimes those connections are because there are circumstances that have happened around me and you kind of go like, ooh, so, okay, I need to listen to this. Or that somebody will say something and totally unrelated to the conversation and only in prayer and reflection later might I go, oh, I see. And it may not have anything really to do with the conversation that transpired, but yet in that moment, God was wanting to speak to me. Ordinary conversation, ordinary life, ordinary work, ordinary living, that God comes and speaks to us through others, through circumstances, through our own prayer life, through our own reflections, through our own meditation. What do you do with it when God comes to you? How do you respond when God offers that nudge of invitation to you? You could simply brush it off because again, you know, we have that free will and we can do it. We can say, I'm tired. I've been fishing all night and it's got nothing. I'm going home. I'm going to bed. Or you could say, got it. I got it. I'll drop my net. Okay. I'm hearing you, Lord. I will drop my net. I'll take that next step. I'll send that email. I'll make that telephone call. Whatever God is inviting you to do in that next step, say, I will do that next step. The point is, I believe that you can't catch the abundant grace of God unless you drop your net. We believe that God's grace is at work in our lives all the time. And maybe it's just a matter of recognition that we, we don't recognize the abundance of God's grace unless we say yes to Jesus, because we are receiving the grace all the time. And maybe it's just that we don't recognize it all the time. But when we recognize it and we see it, we know that God's grace is abundant. And we know that this abundant is a, truly a great blessing in our life. And while this is a story of Jesus calling the first disciples in Luke's gospel, we've been at this fishing for a while, this discipleship. We've been disciples for a while. And Jesus is still and always inviting us into discipleship, into relationship with him, inviting us to choose to drop our net and say yes. And we know it's really, really hard and because we know Jesus, yet still Jesus summons us to discipleship. The hymn that we sang this morning is actually one of my very favorite hymns, The Summons. And I just wanted to point out, if you have it handy, pull it out. Otherwise, you know, you remember it. The verses in the hymn today, there are 20 lines on here. In 14 of those 20 lines begin with the words, will you? I thought that's really significant. Will you? And two of the lines are actually that are not, that don't start with will you that are posted here is because they are just a, the second part of a really long question, such as, will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? and admit to what I mean in you, in you, in me. And the next one where it doesn't start with will you, will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you, in you, in me. Four full verses of will you, will you. And only four, and all spoken by God to us the invitation to you, the invitation to me, where God says, will you, will you, will you? And then the last four, 
lines, the last verse, only one verse. Lord, your summons echoes true. Our response to God, our yes response to God. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company, I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus, I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. I believe this is Jesus' invitation to us to drop our net and follow Jesus. And as we remember and focus on the one who is doing the calling, we remember that it's not about us. It's about God who is calling us and not just calling us to drop our nets so that we can experience that abundant grace of God in our life. But there's more that God wants us to follow God, that Jesus is extending the invitation to follow Jesus. When have you dropped the net in your life and recognized the abundant grace of God in your life? How did you say yes to Jesus in that moment? And what has transpired in your life since then? How has your life been transformed by Jesus by dropping your net and saying yes? It's risky and it's costly. And you don't know, like Morgan was so brave this morning. It was so amazing to be able to stand here and be blindfolded, knowing that she's of course in the sanctuary amongst people who love her dearly. And yet she says, yes, she dropped her net and said yes. to so Stacy, who she trusted to guide her who would not leave her side, who would not bring her to harm. Are we that trusting with Jesus to walk that journey with us, to allow Jesus to lead us, even where we don't know where we're going, even in situations that are frightening and very scary, and yet knowing that we can trust Jesus as we go? God takes us beyond where we can ever imagine. I was thinking about this and I, um, you know, my dad's been on my mind a lot the last few days for, it's sort of like, okay, so God, what are you telling me in all of this? It's one of those things I haven't quite put together yet, but working on it. But I remember there was a year when my dad was senior pastor at First Church in Evanston, First UMC in Evanston. And for some reason, my mom was out of town and my sister lived in the area still then, but she was gone too for some reason. And I got to have my dad to myself, which was very unusual um, for his birthday was always right around Father's Day. And so I got to spend the day with him on Father's Day. It was just him and me. And we had such a wonderful time. And, you know, you just kind of ask your parents those questions like, how did we get here? You know, like, how did we end up in Illinois? You know, both my parents were born and raised in Colorado. They'd known each other most of their lives. And yet here we were in Illinois. And I don't remember ever hearing the whole story. And my dad shared with me that, they, that he had just finished seminary in Denver. And they had, uh, he had received a fellowship for the study at the University of Chicago as he was beginning his PhD program. And it was about annual conference time. And those of us who've been Methodists for all of our lives, remember there was a time when the appointments were made at annual conference. So you literally had to go to conference and receive the appointments. And then there was always a bank of pay phones, remember pay phones, and all the clergy would like run to the pay phones and quick call their spouses, you know, waiting at home to know whether they were gonna move or not. And my dad went to conference and he was an unknown. And for the entire time of conference, that was when it was at, um, in Evanston. And he would meet everybody who came out the door and introduce himself and say, hi, I'm Emery Purcell. And I just graduated from seminary and I'm going to the University of Chicago you know, for some school and I am hoping to get an appointment. Now, my dad had had a couple of appointments during seminary 
and he his dad was a pastor so he was not unfamiliar with the church nor was he unfamiliar with being a pastor and so he was telling me that as he was going through this process and is introducing introducing himself to various people district superintendents bishops and anyone else who would basically stop and shake his hand and listen to him he shared that that night that he and my mom had gone to the memorial service that was held at first united methodist church in evanston that very church that he is now serving as a senior pastor it dawned on me that as he's sharing the story about the memorial service, Ian, he said then that the ushers used to wear tuxedo tails and black patent leather shoes and white gloves and I, I, fancy. And the women would come to the memorial service in their fur coats. And my mom and dad grew up in, you know, Southwest Colorado, and they were just country kids. And they were young. My mom was probably, well, she, all four of us were born. So she was probably 23. And my dad was probably 25 or 26, still really young. And they were so impressed, but they thought they were such big shots because, you know, here they are, you know, young adults coming out into the world. And yet here they were amongst the greatest. And dad said that they felt about this big you know, amongst all of those fish in that really big sea. And yet I asked him, did you ever imagine then that you would be the senior pastor of this very church today? He said, no, the abundant grace of God. He dropped his net. He said, yes, he moved his family of four little children across country 1400 miles from home with a small U-Haul trailer on the back of their car. Everything that he owned, everything that he loved most was in that vehicle, moving away, dropping the net to see the abundant grace of God as it unfolded in his life. And here he was all those years later, experiencing an abundant grace of God throughout his life. See, leaving the old way behind in following Jesus. And I guess maybe I'm thinking about it mostly because we're right about the, the second anniversary of his funeral, where we buried him in the Memorial Garden at First United Methodist Church in Evanston. And I was thinking about that, and I didn't really make that connection until, uh, you know, very recently that when he came to Illinois and those, those first days that he was here at annual conference, and he went to the memorial service at First Church in Evanston, and then he got to serve as senior pastor at First Church in Evanston, and now he and my mom's ashes are buried in the memorial garden at First Church in Evanston. The abundant grace of God at work in his life. The abundant grace of God that is at work in all of our lives. When we hear the question that our Lord asks us, will you? Will you? I honestly pray and hope that as we continue growing in our love for God and neighbor and self, that our response is the same as our song writer. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company, I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. This discipleship is an ongoing growing process. Jesus called the first disciples to follow him. Jesus continues to call us and invite us to follow him. And we know that when Jesus says, follow me, and I will teach you how to fish for people, it means that we are not left here in our own discipleship with Jesus, that Jesus is calling us and inviting us out into the world. 
who are those fish, quote unquote, that we are catching today? How are we taking our discipleship out into the world and making an impact on others? There's lots of ways. I know you can come up with many, many ways. Obviously, say grace is one of the ways here in our congregation. Our young people, our children and youth are another way. Our music, another way. That God is constantly inviting us to say yes, to drop our net, say yes, experience that abundant grace of God, and then fish for people. Amen. As we prepare to leave this place, we go forth, uh, remembering that Jesus is always calling us into discipleship and that, um, that we always have the freedom to say yes or no, but continue to pray that as we leave this place, that we will say yes to Jesus, experience that abundant grace, go forth in joy, go forth in peace, always go forth in love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give peace. Give